Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the Santa Rosa Fire Department and the Office of Community Engagement for such an important and timely series on being wildfire ready. My name is Magali Tellez, and I'm the Director of Community Engagement for the City of Santa Rosa. Buenas tardes a todos y gracias por su presencia y participación en este evento tan importante sobre cómo estar listos para los incendios forestales. Mi nombre es Magali Telles y soy la directora de participación comunitaria de la ciudad de Santa Rosa. Si gustaría sintonizarse en español, puede hacerlo haciendo clic en el icono del globo que dice Interpretation en el fondo de la pantalla. ASL Interpretation is also provided and the interpreter will be spotlit for the duration of this webinar. To the presenters this evening, please make sure to speak as clearly as possible to allow for Spanish and ASL translation. To get us started, I would like to introduce Fire Chief Scott Westrow. Thank you, Magali. And uh, I just want to take a moment to thank Director Teas and her entire team for developing this program, putting it together and working with the fire department and other city departments to, to really express a very important message. And this is our uh, fourth day of doing these types of events. Each one has been a little bit different. Um, but I wanted to explain why we decided to do this. And again, this was this was Magali's brainchild and, and we're just kind of following along here and trying to help where we can. But um, with, all that the, the, with all that this community has gone through, we've, we really see that the fires create a common bond. It's a bond of resiliency, strength, and unfortunately trauma. We collectively have shown that what it was, we have collectively shown what a resilient community looks like and how that strength unites us. I truly believe, as has been evidenced in the last four years, that we are stronger together. That's not only the fire department, it's not the city, it's the entire community. So this series was designed for us to talk about where we have been, where we are going, how to heal personally and as a community, and how to be more prepared and in control of the elements of what we can control. As we all know, with, with wildfires, Mother Nature has the ultimate say, so anything that we can do to be holistically prepared will benefit all members of the community and make us all stronger. Our fourth session will discuss lessons learned from the 2017 Sonoma County wildfires and the 2020 glass fire and the improvements that have been made to emergency preparedness and emergency management. This workshop will also discuss evacuation routes for residents in the city of Santa Rosa limits, tools and resources for evacuating and information, information about emergency alerts and notifications. The changes we have seen in emergency preparedness over the last several years has been remarkable. It's not a fire department, public safety, city, or county effort alone. This is a whole community approach to changes that leads to improvement and resiliency. These changes are working, but we can be better. For instance, if we look at the Tubbs fire alone and exclude the Nuns fire within the city limits, we lost nine lives and almost 3,100 structures. In the glass fire, we lost zero lives and lost 32 structures. Our common goal should be a net zero loss. Again, we are not in this effort alone and we are not done. Regardless of how the fire department and city have improved to face this new normal, the community deserves a bulk of the credit. We have witnessed a major shift in preparation, engagement, awareness, and reactivity by the community. And if it wasn't for all of you, we couldn't do our jobs. Before I turn it over to the next set of speakers, I'd like to remind everyone that Spanish translation is available and American Sign Language interpretation is obviously available as well. With that, I'd like to introduce Emergency Preparedness Manager, Neil Bregman, and Assistant Fire Marshal, Paul Lowenthal. Thank you, Scott. I'm gonna get right into our slideshow here. Uh, it's both Paul and I. There may be a couple of times where I pause and say, Paul, why don't you take this one? So, so just bear with us, but, but this is kind of a dual presentation by both Paul and Neil. And with that, let me share my screen. Okay, so Neil Bregman, Paul Lowenthal, uh, we'll have our information at the end as well. Uh, if you need to contact us for any questions. I'd like to start with going over the differences between the various alert systems that we use to notify the public regarding an emergency. 
keep in mind for all of these that we use all of them or at least a multiple number of them in any particular emergency depending on its size. Also, many of these involve multiple technologies and they are not 100% or silver bullets, which is why we use multiple tools to make sure that everyone gets the message. In case one tool doesn't work, we use a different tool as well to make sure that we're reaching as many members of our community as we can. And the one alert that isn't on here that I actually wanna start with is actually our community. Like Chief Westrup just brought up, this isn't an effort just by police or fire or emergency management. We need you, our community members, to be a part of this as well. Many of you are probably already signed up for the alert systems we're gonna go over today, but sometimes we have members of our community who are either not signed up, I'd like you to try and help them get registered, or there are members who are signed up and like I just talked about, none of these communication tools is foolproof. Neighbors helping neighbors, neighbors making sure neighbors are aware that there's an evacuation or some other emergency happening is a critical piece of our system. We will always use all of our tools and notify as many, as many members of our community as we can. There just may be times that not all the tools work and we have to ask you, neighbors helping neighbors, going and knocking on each other's doors as you evacuate to make sure everyone in your area has gotten the message. That's a key critical piece on top of all of these systems. So now going through the alerts, I'll start at the top with the emergency alert system or EAS. This is the system that is on radio and television and has that audible tone that many times will cut into a broadcast. This system is regional. We've been asked by the state and federal authorities to reserve using that for only the largest evacuations. So it would have to be probably multiple zones within the city or a very large incident for us to use that one because even though our message will be targeted to get information to community members in Santa Rosa, that message will go out for the entire Bay Area broadcast area. The next system down is wireless emergency alert or WIA. Now this one, just like EAS, no registration is required as long as your cell phone is on that, and the audible tones are available. So not on vibrate on the side of your iPhone, you have to make sure your ringer is flipped on. As long as that is on, when we do a message using the wireless emergency alert, your phone will have a tone and you will get a message that's anywhere from 90 to 360 characters based upon the model of phone you have. Wireless emergency alert is one of our primary evacuation alerting tools. The key about wireless alert is that it works in the area where we draw a box as far as where we think people should be evacuated from. If your cell phone is within that box, you should get the alert. I say should because there are differences from carrier to carrier as far as who they interpret being within our geographic or geofenced wireless emergency alert box. AT&T is much more liberal with who they consider to be in the box versus say Verizon. AT&T in fact will hit any phone that is connected to a cell tower that is in our geographical boundary. Unlike Verizon where your cell phone itself must be within the geographical boundary for it to alert. Because that system has those issues and is not 100% foolproof, we also recommend that everyone who's a resident of Santa Rosa or really all of Sonoma County, sign up for the third one down here, which is an opt-in system called SoCoAlert. And we'll give you information later on how to register, but the key is you do need to go and register for this one. The nice thing about it is you can register as many locations as you want an alert about. So your house, your kid's school, your parents' house, grandma and grandpa's house, doggy daycare, as many places as you care about, go and register those for all the phone numbers that you would want information about that on. The really great thing about SoCo Alert is that in an evacuation, you will get a phone call, your phone will ring, and we will give you information along with email and text but also via a phone call with a recorded message. This is a little bit different than our next system down, Nixle. Nixle 
is only email and text, and it is not geographic specific in the same way that WIA or SoCoAlert are. It's only by zip code, and it will never give you a phone call. If you want a phone call with a recorded message letting you know that there's an emergency and you may need to evacuate, you need to be registered for SoCoAlert. Nixa will not do that. The next one down on our list of Know Your Alerts is TV and local radio. Aside from doing that EAS where we blast something on television and radio, our public information team makes contact with our locally broadcast stations and gives them pertinent information like locations of shelters, temporary evacuation points, or other resources. The last one on here are our high-low sirens. Aside from using all the systems that I just went through, police and fire vehicles in Santa Rosa have a high-low tone that means only evacuation available on their cars. If you hear that tone, if you hear the high-low, it's time to go. One other system that I want to mention is the NOAA weather radios. That is new for this year. We received a grant for 12,000 radios from FEMA, and we've been doing radio giveaways to targeted neighborhoods within our wildland urban interface to begin with. The next event is for our Northwest zone, which is June 12th. After that, we have two citywide events. And again, we'll give you information at the end regarding the locations, but that is open to all city residents to come get a free NOAA weather radio. The radios will tone out anytime there's an evacuation anywhere in Sonoma County. Unfortunately, we can't narrow those evacuation notices down to just Santa Rosa, but we think it's a great tool because it's battery backup, doesn't rely on cell phones, relies on radio instead, will work if we have a public safety power shutoff or some other type of power interruption. And finally, aside from having an audible tone for our deaf members of the community or hard of hearing, the NOAA weather radios can have attachments on them that have a bed shaker and a strobe light. If there's anyone who is interested in those attachments or the NOAA weather radio, feel free to contact me, uh, especially if you need those attachments. We have a grant for those and we're working with a community partner who works with our deaf community to give those out. Now on this slide, I'd like to go over a few of our enhancements that we've made since October, 2017. The first one is anytime we have a red flag warning, which is when we have very dry conditions, low humidity, and a likelihood of high winds, we upstep. In other words, we bring more fire crews on, aside from our day-to-day -day fire crew and operations, to make sure we have enough resources to deal with any fire emergency that might arise. And that's not only a Santa Rosa program, that's countywide. We upstep or bring more crews on the fire crews throughout the county whenever there's a red flag warning. The next one down here are our wildfire counts. There's a system of cameras all over the North Bay, look from on, the, on high hills, looking at the valleys and other areas that might be prone to wildfire. And those cameras are available for the public to look at, but also our dispatch center, which is monitoring them 24 seven, that, that has already proven itself to be an excellent resource. We've been able to see any number of fires when they start early, which allows us to get our crews and resources there to take care of those situations before they become large. If they do become large, because we have the cameras, we are well aware of what direction they are coming in. We have significantly more time if we need to let the community know that they have an evacuation warning or order. This year, we've improved the wildfire cameras in that we now have an artificial intelligence software system that monitors the cameras along with humans. The, the artificial intelligence looks for signs of smoke on any of the cameras. And if it sees something that might be a fire, it alerts humans to go and take a further look. This again has already saved us minutes in identifying potential wildfires this fire season. Another improvement that we have made is we now have what's called a warm emergency operations center. In 2017, our emergency operations center, which is the room in which we coordinate our overall response, was cold, meaning we had to go into it when the emergency started, turn on the lights, move around tables and chairs, 
and plug our computers in. And it's a big room that could take 30, to 30 minutes to an hour. That's a critical time to really be making sure that you and our community have all the information they need, that we are coordinating our efforts and that we are getting our job done, not setting up tables and chairs. Starting last year, we moved our EOC to a different location where we can keep it warm and ready to go all the time. In fact, we saw that pay off in the glass fire. As soon as we had an issue and we knew that we needed to activate our EOC in the glass fire, we're all immediately able to get to the EOC and get to work. There was no lag time. There was no 45 minutes of setting up. Another new feature that we saw last year, which will cower forward, are temporary evacuation points. Normally, in the past, when people were evacuating, they understandably wanted to find a place or location to go to. It takes us some time to get our emergency shelter set up. What we learned during COVID is that temporary evacuation points are essentially safe places that you can go park, be greeted by city staff and potentially the American Red Cross, and either figure out your own next step from a safe location or get assistance from staff for figuring out if you need shelter or some other accommodation. We now have temporary evacuation points. The city has one ready to go anytime there's all red flag warnings as well. Paul, why don't you cover the notifications and, and those improvements on, on the checklist there? Thanks, Neil. So yes, uh, a lot has been uh, learned. A lot of changes have been made uh, that have ultimately led to the successes that we saw most recently in 2020. Uh, in 2017, that was uh, clearly something none of us ever wanted to go through. Uh, didn't clearly expect to have something of that magnitude impact our community. And we said from that point on that we would not only be an agency that would just put the fire out, but we'd put the fire out and ultimately uh, work to make improvements for not only Santa Rosa, but for agencies across the state and across the country. With that, uh, we have been absolutely uh, dedicated to improving our processes, improving how we utilize these systems and making our community more resilient and safer in the event of another wildfire. In 2020, uh, we were able to actually watch uh, what was originally the Shady Fire uh, develop at the Napa Sonoma County line. Much different than in 2017, uh, when we were literally fighting uh, the fire as it moving into the city and evacuating people at the same time. In the 2020 fires, we were able to actually see the fire develop and immediately start putting our systems in place. Before units had even arrived at scene, the Santa Rosa Fire Department, Police Department, and our emergency management had already scheduled a conference call, knowing the potential of the impacts to our city almost instantaneously. The plans that we've had in place since 17 that have been developed over the last several years were never intended to sit on a shelf and they were immediately implemented all the way down to the point of bringing Spanish translators in as we were literally responding and arriving to the scene. With that, the law enforcement initiated uh, their evacuations of the two-tone high-low sirens. We initiated multiple evacuations for our zones that were developed throughout the east side of the, the city of Santa Rosa. Community members were able to utilize a lot of the tools and resources that you're gonna see over the next several slides as far as evacuation checklists, zones, uh, to implement what we feel was an extremely successful evacuation. We benefited that night from having what we refer to as a night air attack. There happened to already be a night air attack flying on the glass fire that was burning in Napa County. When that air attack was shifted over to the Napa Sonoma County line, they were able to tell us that the amount of time, roughly two to three hours before Santa Rosa was gonna be impacted by fire, which enabled us to feel comfortable with evacuating that number of uh, evacuation zones in that amount of time, knowing that there would be traffic, but knowing that we had the ability to get people out of harm's way with the hours that we had before the fire moved in. And the successes were truly noticeable as our firefighters were able to move into neighborhoods and successfully fight the fire. Um, if you look at how we had roughly 100,000 people 
evacuating during the tubs and the thousands of homes that were destroyed as we were fighting to move to get in, as people were fighting to get out. In 2020, it was amazing to see once the traffic cleared, how firefighters were able to move into the neighborhoods and clearly be able to move around neighborhoods unobstructed and only have roughly 30 homes uh, that were destroyed. Granted, we don't want to see any homes destroyed. One note is that if you look at the total number of homes impacted by fire in the city limits, there were 1,152 properties impacted by fire in the glass fire and only 30 uh, plus structures destroyed. That speaks volumes to the enhancements and how things worked out so much better in 2020 than they did in 2017. So like I mentioned, every, every, all the material that you see today will be available at srcity.org backslash readysr. So if you don't get a chance to get down all the info you see today, you can go there and there are links to the evacuation zones, the checklists, you can review know your alerts and how to opt in to SoCo Alert. You will also be able to find your neighborhood travel routes, which we will talk about in a minute as well. But let's talk about our city of Santa Rosa evacuation zones. So our zones remain unchanged from last year. We know that the Sonoma County just released a great map, which shows an integration of both city and county zones throughout Sonoma County. The county has changed some of the names and boundaries for its zones. Our zones remain unchanged from when they were released well over a year ago. I highly suggest that before our next emergency, you go and look up what your zone is, write it down and put it on your refrigerator. There's a zone lookup tool, again, at srcity.org backslash readysr. There's a section on evacuation zones. When you click on that, you will see this find your evacuation zone address lookup tool. Please go and look up your zone and make sure you know it ahead of time. If you have issues finding your zone, you can call 211 and they will help you locate your zone. It's really a critical piece. We saw that our ability to quickly get information to our community in 2020 in the glass fire was contingent upon people knowing their zones and us being able to communicate quickly which zones need to be evacuated. I'd like to just go over very quickly the different terminology you might see in the a evacuation notice. And there are three of them. There's an evacuation order, and that means you must evacuate immediately. There's a threat to your life. Don't wait, don't hesitate, you have to go. An evacuation warning means that there's a threat to life and property within a particular time frame. We'll try if we can to communicate that time frame, but it means that if you haven't yet, you need to pack your go bag, get your car together, and be ready to leave. This is the get set mode. It is possible that you will get an evacuation order very quickly after a warning. Sometimes fire conditions change, and even though we think we may have an hour, or more between a warning and an order, the wind can pick up or the people in the field who know about fire behavior may quickly, even after we've issued a warning, moments later say, no, that needs to become an order. We need people to leave now. So please sign up for SoCo Alert and pay attention to all those other alerts we talked about. If you do need to evacuate, I'll remind you again, Neighbors Helping Neighbors is a critical piece of our system please go knock on the doors of your neighbors around you, especially if you know that there are certain neighbors who maybe are elderly, slower, more vulnerable, or have a disability that makes it difficult for them to process information. They may need just the help of knowing that it's time to go. And then finally, our third type of evacuation notice, which would probably be for something different than a wildfire, is a shelter in place. And in that case, we'd ask you to stay where you are, keep your doors and windows closed. And we would then send you an all clear when the situation had changed and you were free to no longer shelter in place. Our next topic is Paul's neighborhood evacuation, or sorry, exit routes. 
Thanks, Neil. So one of the uh, first efforts we started moving forward with before we officially developed our plans uh, was our neighborhood uh, exit routes. It became important for us after watching a lot of the lessons learned uh, around not only uh, the North Bay, but really around the state, how important it is that residents understand uh, that the way that they typically would leave a neighborhood may not be the way that they should leave the neighborhood in the event of an evacuation. We started breaking up Santa Rosa into different neighborhoods and showing people the different ways that they could get out of their neighborhood and that we recommend that they get out of their neighborhood. The neighborhood routes, again, were designed to get people to start thinking about alternate travel routes. Typically on a smaller incident uh, that uh, could develop within the city limits, it would not be uncommon to have law enforcement in your neighborhood telling you exactly which way to go. That is a, a pretty common occurrence. Fortunately, uh, we don't have uh, as many fires of that magnitude or that size in the city limits. Uh, we uh, pride ourselves on the amount of staffing and the firefighters that we have that we're able to, a majority of the time with the incidents that start within the city limits, keep them relatively small and to the point they never even show up in the Press Democrat. However, there are times, as we've seen, where Santa Rosa has historically uh, been impacted by, account, by fires that develop outside of the city and impact our city. Uh, with that, it highlights the importance of understanding the different ways uh, that you can leave your neighborhood. During the glass fire, uh, knowing that we had several hours in advance for people to empty out of their neighborhoods, uh, we noticed a lot of residents automatically going to the same route that they would typically go to. And it did create traffic. However, as we stated earlier, we're fully aware of that potential. And that's why you saw the amount of law enforcement from multiple agencies across Sonoma County, staffing various intersections, uh, knowing that we had the several hours to get people out of the east side of Santa Rosa. However, it did highlight the importance of taking the, the travel routes that may not be the most common travel route. For example, in Skyhawk, we are aware and we've heard from several people the amount of traffic uh, that was backed up for people trying to get down to Highway 12 and Calistoga Road. If people would have taken the chance uh, to go the opposite direction on Sonoma Highway, perhaps towards Warm Springs Road or Bennett Valley Road and wrap back around towards Highway 12, or taking uh, Calistoga Road the opposite direction towards Montecito or side streets, there was the potential to help disperse some of that traffic. Um, so again, our goal is to make sure that uh, people understand the importance of, of using those alternate travel routes. They may look a lot longer, but they can help save some of that backup if we have to go through something like this again. If there was a need to quickly evacuate an area in a much shorter amount of time, then the travel routes that you would typically uh, go to that are used on the Know Your Ways Out uh, would be pushed away and law enforcement would be directing you in very specific directions out of harm's way. So our next topic is evacuation checklists. Again, at srcity.org backslash ready SR, you'll find an eva a wildfire evacuation checklist, which gives you lists of things that you can build in and put in your go bag, as well as tips on preparing your home if you need to evacuate, as well as a few tips on driving and being safe while you're evacuating during a fire. I really want to stress that now is the time to look up that evacuation zone, go and print out your neighborhood travel routes or know your ways out that Paul just talked about and put those on your refrigerator, print out this evacuation checklist. And if you have had not had time yet to build your go bag, building a go bag is not something you will have the time, especially under stress, to be doing once that evacuation warning or order comes. That's either time to get your car packed and be ready or to just go. It is not the time to start building your bag. What do you want to have in your bag? Some basic food and water. We will surely give you food and water when you arrive at a temporary evacuation point or shelter. It may just be a little while before we can get those resources. Things like prescription medication, eyeglasses, 
a phone charger, comfortable clothes, and of course, any important documents, photographs, or things that you find irreplaceable should be in a go bag or handy to grab when it's time to evacuate. Some people even talk about a 10 and 10. What are the 10 things, if you only had 10 minutes right now, that are the most important to you that you would go and grab if you needed to rebuild your life with nothing else? Think about what those 10 things are and gather them together and put them in your go bag. Or at the very least, know what your list is and be ready to grab them and go immediately if you get an evacuation order or to go and put that stuff in your car if you get that evacuation warning. I will also stress one other piece of information regarding evacuation warnings. Even though it's not mandatory that you leave at that time, it's not a bad idea to actually go to avoid the traffic Paul just talked about, or if you're just stressed by the fact that you're now in an evacuation warning zone or area, going somewhere that's outside of that area for your own safety and relief and lack of stress would be super helpful not only for you, but for first responders. And here's just a few more examples of the things. Not only does it talk about preparing you and your pets, it talks about how on the checklist you can prepare inside your home and the areas outside of your home right now, today, to be ready since we've now started fire season to get ready in case there is a fire and you need to evacuate. So again, all of this can be found at srcity.org backslash ready SR. And I will leave Paul and my information up here for a second if you wish to contact one of us. Thank you, Neil. So, you know, to close out on uh, Neil's checklist, our goal uh, truly is, is to set our community up for success. Uh, again, if you look at uh, how far we've come since 2017, the documents, the guidance, the information that we're uh, preparing uh, truly is for our community to help protect our community. The checklists uh, will help you. Uh, we saw the successes of people utilizing the checklist, utilizing a lot of the measures uh, that we've been discussing over the last several days as far as defensible space and home hardening coupled with the, the use of the checklist of what to do before they leave, lead to successes left and right. Uh, to, uh, Chief Scott Westrope uh, and myself uh, were in Oakmont during the glass fire and watched uh, the fire move into the Oakmont neighborhood. And it was clear that people truly did heed to the warnings. They've used a lot of the resources and tools, again, as far as defensible space and home hardening vegetation management, weed abatement, and ultimately preparing their homes, uh, all the way down to moving uh, doormats off doorways, locking and securing doors and windows, uh, all because we're utilizing the tools and resources that we have to give early notification to our community, to allow them the time to evacuate and to put all those processes in place. Uh, with that, we know this is a, a topic uh, that we often get a lot of questions, uh, comments, and or uh, feedback regarding. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, Sergeant Chris Mahern from the Santa Rosa Police Department, uh, Adrian Mertens, our Intergovernment and Chief Communications Officer for the City of Santa Rosa. Uh, Adrian, Chris, uh, Neil, and myself uh, are, as we typically are here for our community, uh, we're here to answer questions and we want to make sure uh, that you, the viewers, uh, have the opportunity to get things clarified, to uh, help clean up any misunderstandings and ultimately uh, give you information from us to make sure that you can leave here tonight uh, knowing that you got valuable information and got your questions answered. And so with that, I will um, <coughs> let uh, Shelly step in. I don't have a question at this time. 
So if anybody has any questions, feel free to raise your hand, or if you're not comfortable talking and you want to put a question into the chat box, um, please do so. Um, and it might also be a good time as we're, oh, there's your first question. We have a appreciation for everything you're doing. Yeah, it looks like there's a hand up from a Jane. Okay. Hey Jane, it looks like you can go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, I too appreciate everything you've been doing. And I live near Oakmont and during the glass fire when we were evacuating, I wanted to go towards Sonoma instead of towards Santa Rosa, but I didn't know if it was safe to go in that direction. I didn't know exactly where the fire was um, and I didn't know how to tell. So I just followed the herd and it took me three hours, I think, to get to the middle of Santa Rosa, but I mean, we did make it and thanks to law enforcement, we got redirected to some other routes, but um, I don't know how to deal with that in, the, in that kind of situation if we don't know if it's safe to go another way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Um, and so that's a, that's a good question and good feedback um, and kind of what we talked about. Uh, there are times where if there if we do truly uh, need people to go in a, in a direction to escape harm's way, uh, our law enforcement partners uh, in, in off, it often will help guide traffic in that direction. Or it may be that the emergency message that you receive, in addition to uh, evacuate the specific zone, may tell you a direction to move in. Um, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, we'll look at different processes or potential to work on that messaging. Should we have to do that again? Um, but if you're are, if you are not pushed in a specific direction, uh, that goes back to the importance of the know your ways out, where we're trying to get people to not follow the the masses and go the direction that they typically are all uh, moving towards, and and to and to go the opposite way. And if there's any other questions uh, or if there's anything that Adrian or Chris want to share. Yeah, I would just like to mention one thing. Um, Neil referenced the website a lot and that's where you can find all the information that was covered tonight. But the city is also in the process of mailing an emergency preparedness guide to all of our households uh, throughout Santa Rosa. We're about, it's a phased mailing. We're about a third of the way through that. Um, we've covered uh, most of the household, or we've covered all of the households within our wildland urban interface, but for those that haven't received their emergency preparedness guide in the mailing, you should be getting it in a, about the next one to two weeks in the mail. So be on the lookout for that. It also has information on the NOAA weather radio distribution events that Neil mentioned. Um, it's a nine page booklet and has information, as I said, on most of what was covered tonight by Neil and Paul. We have a, a question asking, what other informational events will be coming up? So uh, information as far as a, a, um, a series like this uh, will occur again next year. Uh, we are already in discussions uh, about uh, doing this again uh, and making it a bigger event, hopefully drawing uh, our, you know, much more of our community. Uh, however, as far as uh, information, uh, right now, uh, a lot of improvements, as Adrian had said, uh, have been made to our web content. Uh, one of the action items that came out of what we refer to as our Community Wildfire Protection Plan, which was a plan implemented uh, in August of last year that was developed to help mitigate the risks associated with wildfire, identified a need to centralize information for our community. So we are now pushing uh, our community to two websites. The one Adrian uh, uh, gave the information on for the Ready uh, SR. And the second website 
is srcity.org forward slash wildfire ready. Those two websites uh, will become the hub for both emergency preparedness and wildfire readiness uh, for our community. A lot of what will be coming this year uh, could be every, anything from uh, preparedness in the event of chipping programs to implementation of potential grants to additional community meetings. Uh, those plans uh, will be moving forward with feverishly, uh, as you saw, uh, you may have seen recently, uh, we have uh, been given uh, five and a quarter million dollars from the pg and &E settlement funds. Uh, that uh, is also helping to offset potential cost share of additional grants that the city of Santa Rosa has been actively working on for several years now. Uh, since 2017, we have been trying to apply for several grants to help with education, engagement, as well as physical uh, activities done in our community to make things safer. Uh, we do have right now uh, upwards of uh, roughly $7 million worth of grants uh, that we are working on, uh, literally uh, almost uh, daily uh, to get those uh, moved forward. Uh, and we're looking forward to hopefully we will be successful grants uh, that will help push a lot more activities and ability for us to engage with our community uh, moving forward. Thank you. Um, we have one comment it says uh, 4,000 people in Oakmont wondering whether to turn to Sonoma or Santa Rosa. It would be great to have advice if we went to Son we went to Sonoma, i.e. options. Got it. Yeah, no, we um, will take that uh, information and look to see how we can potentially uh, make it clear uh, that there are multiple ways out uh, if we do have to evacuate of that magnitude again. Next question is asking about the evacuation tags. So from the police department, we don't use evacuation tags in Santa Rosa. They are effective in some Royal, rural areas because of long driveways that could be a quarter mile long and have one family there and it takes up a lot of resources to get out there. Internally, what we do within the city, because we are more of a dense population, we at the police department have practiced over the years since 2017, a more grid-like evacuation process with our first responders and working with other ways of getting people out, whether it's our transportation department as well. So even if we were to see an evacuation tag on a door, we're still gonna go and check the residents to make sure that everyone's evacuated. Um, we keep using the layered approach of notifications as well, but realistically, when it comes towards the evacuation notices, that's just to say someone's probably not in there. There's no guarantee that someone didn't put that on a door and something happened while they went to go get back and get a bag or whatnot. So we wanna make sure as best that we can that everyone has evacuated out of there and that comes down to really just checking door to door once we have that time and resources to do that. So that's the main reason we avoid them at this point. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a question. I have a thank you so much for the effort and technology that will help us survive the next fire season. And thank you for the greater peace of mind. That's a comment. Looks like uh, Magali has a couple questions that she wants to read, or is that the ones that are already taken care of? I believe that is them. Yeah, that's it. Great, and unless any of the other panelists have anything they would like to close out on? Mm -hmm. um, not sure if I'm stealing Magali's thunder, but I will just mention that this meeting recording will be available on our website, um, along with the other workshops that were uh, held uh, throughout the rest of this week. Um, that this was the fourth in a series of four workshops and those will be available. All of them will be up and posted uh, later this evening at srcd.org forward slash wildfire ready. So thank you uh, for those that are still here that have stuck around, uh, been here either tonight or throughout the week. Uh, we appreciate it. We look forward to future opportunities to continue to engage with our community. 
uh, to again make our community more resilient and prepared for uh, wildfires uh, locally and throughout our region. Um, we appreciate the opportunity for being here and uh, look forward to engaging again. If you have any questions or anything that comes to mind, feel free to reach out to us by email at srfd at srcity.org. Thank you.